And so some background information to the calculation. So this is presenting calculations as I'd like to present them and review them. Um, so light timber frames as designed by NZS3604 usually have an assumed ductility of 3.5 due to the jib board bracing. Now this is quite a novelty to me because coming from England, we don't consider plasterboard to be a structural material and we certainly wouldn't consider plasterboard to be ductile. However, jib has done a very good job of persuading the New Zealand industry that jib is not only a fine structural material and it can perform in a ductile manner under seismic loading and they've done some tests to prove that. It does feel counterintuitive, especially as the second part of it says that the steel frame is not ductile, i.e. you're using a ductility of one. Well, this confused me no end. How does plasterboard get a ductility of three and a half when steel only gets a ductility of one? Now, we all know that steel is a highly ductile material and you would normally have a ductility mu factor bigger than one. However, in the case of a timber framed house, which is really what NZS 3604 is aimed at, the portal frame, the steel portal frame, is not likely to go beyond its elastic limit. It's not going to go plastic, so you're not going to get ductility. You're not going to be looking towards ductility. On the other hand, how does plasterboard get a three and a half ductility? Well, it's because of your nailing or screwing your plasterboard onto a timber frame. And the ductility comes from those fixings under a seismic load or any dynamic load for that matter. When you push this uh, timber frame wall clad in uh, jib board, it will deform. And as it deforms, the middle of the fixings will start to go ductile. That's where the ductility comes from. So the design philosophy is based on the following assumptions. You have an ultimate deflection of your frame and it's limited to 1% of the story height. So height over 100 for wind and seismic at ultimate limit state. You then limit the serviceability limit state deflections to height over 300. And there we have our mu factors of three and a half and one for jib board and the portal frame respectively. So MassCAD allows you to define units and so Jib has defined the unit of a BU. What on earth is a BU? It's a bracing unit. Well, it's simply 1 20th of a kilonewton. Why or why didn't they just use newtons? So coming into the analysis, here is a typical portal frame that we use in a, a house. We have a rafter span, in this case it's a flat rafter, length 6.2 meters, height 2.7 meters. We've done some calculations separately to find out what the capacity of this frame is. So here is our designed bending capacity for the column and the rafter. We've also picked up what the, the I values are for the rafter and the column. So I'm scrolling down. These coefficients come from uh, Klein Logal, the Klein Logal tables. So we start with a notional one kilonewton point load at eaves and apply that like so. Given that one kilonewton point load, you derive an eaves moment MB and a support reaction. So oddly enough, the, both these moments are the same but handed as you can tell from the bending moment diagram. So going down there, <clears throat> the horizontal load limit based on the bending capacity is then derived by factoring up the capacity versus the notional load. And we get a load of 32 kilonewtons. Based on the capacity of the rafter, 29 kilonewtons. We also get a limitation of 27 millimeters for the ULS state based on our notional deflection for a 
a one kilonewton point load, factoring that up again. So factor that through the horizontal loads for the deflection limits are based come down to 17.29 and 5.72 respectively at ULS and SLS. So that's the first portion of, of the calculation. That's deriving it from the actual capacity of the steel frame. Now we want to look at wind as applied to our frame. Well, we've done a separate calculation, which is the earlier pages of that spreadsheet, as to what the wind pressure is on our building. We then work out the ratio between ULS and SLS, and here we go, 1.474. We factor that up to give us an equivalent load at that ULS. And so the bracing capacity in the wind is simply the minimum of these various calculations, which give us 17.2. Now, one nice thing about MathCAD is it allows you to play around with the units. So if I change that to a BU, it will work it out again in BUs. And the simple calculator that Jib provided with the Jib Easy Brace wants you to put in their custom uh, BUs as BUs per meter. Then you tell you, then you need to tell it how many meters of that portal frame you've got. So that's our wind coming to the earthquake. We calculated the elastic hazard spectrum at both SLS and ULS from a different calculation. Again, it's a different part of the spreadsheet. We've assumed a period of 0.4. And here's our ductility for the portal frame and the chip bracing. From that, we get our seismic uh, performance factors, <clears throat> 0 0.9 and 0 0.7 respectively. We then get our <clears throat> inelastic spectrum scaling factors for the portal frame and the jib bracing. So that comes down to there. And from that, we then get our elastic uh, bracing capacity in uh, earthquake mode. So it starts with <clears throat> the minimum of the calculations we've done above, plus the service at 300. So it's a height over 300 limit versus the height over 100 limit at ultimate. Uh, that gives you the capacity factored with scaling factors above, gives you this large number as 500. However, we need to compare that with the natural ratios that we've got, um, and we convert those into a, a BU figure of 158 by using this K factor as well. Now, the damping reduction factor, okay, you use this with caution, and the CSOC journal volume 34 actually gives you a value of 0.7. However, there are limitations on when that can be applied. Um, if in doubt, just leave it as a one. But obviously, that's going to reduce your BUs from that. And again, we pop out with a BU factor uh, as BUs per meter. Now, a quick check looking at Brown's report, SR 337. That's the one by Angela Liu. And there's a formula in there to compare the damping that you get in a jib framed house and comparing what you're assuming to 1170 part five. Now, normally we're looking at damping levels of about 5%, whereas the jib framed house is looking at damping around 20 percent that's quite a lot of damping and to put that in perspective you end up with a steel portal damping factor of 1.73 which then adjusts let's see spell it correctly adjusts our potential be used uh, to 195 be used however that is bigger than we've already calculated, so you take the minimum. So the final EQ bracing units for the portal frame are 158 for 
seismic and 170 for wind. You'll notice it seems to be stronger for wind than it does for earthquake, which usually isn't a problem because it's usually the wind load that's dominating these light timber framed houses and similar buildings rather than earthquakes. And there's the list of references. Thank you.